I've been staring into this microphone for a long time, and this happens a lot when I want to talk about this topic because it's difficult to talk about openly and freely, and in my case, vocally, because I have an easier time writing things than I have saying them. It's not a comfortable topic for me to bring up, which is why when I talk about it, I generally talk about it in neutral terms, trying to adhere to things like facts and papers rather than how it might have impacted me personally. However, since this keeps coming up, let's talk about that whole 40% thing again. Yeah, I'm talking about trans suicide rates, and if you want to back out because of the suicide talk, well, here's your chance. Three, two, one... The Reader's Digest of the whole 40% issue is that the 40% trans suicide rate is generally used as a concern troll effort to indicate why people should be discouraged from transitioning or seeking uh, medical help. Ironically, it's often used in the sense of, well, they need mental help because they're clearly insane, even though the mental health community advises transition. So the part that they conveniently ignore is that suicidality goes down when trans people are normalized and accepted in culture. So in trying to discourage or quote-unquote fix trans individuals, you're making the problem worse. You are part of the reason the 40% statistic exists. The other thing is that um, the 40% is a lifetime thing. So if you tried to kill yourself when you were a teenager, um, even if you are perfectly happy later in life, you're still part of the 40%. And while I wouldn't say that I'm perfectly happy later in life, I am definitely part of that 40% figure. I tried to kill myself numerous times during my teen years and a couple of times into my 20s. And the reason that I kept attempting suicide was that people were shit. I had gotten the crap kicked out of me and worse since, like, around the age of puberty for not acting manly enough, and then later on for trying to present as female and therefore acting, um, usually the word was gay rather than trans, because we weren't on the radar at the time. So, hooray for visibility. Now when people try and murder me, they're trying to do it for the right reason rather than categorizing me improperly. That's improvement, right? Sorry, I deal with tough issues with snark and bad humor. Um, but... Moving on, it's not so much being trans that's the issue. It is the sense of hopelessness that can come from living in a community that's horrible to trans people, to living in an environment where you are powerless and where people will try and hurt you. And that's the thing. In my 20s, things got so shitty that I actually went back into the closet effectively. I dropped being out and... People were generally polite enough to just ignore it, I guess. I still got some hostility for it. But the thing is that giving up didn't uh, didn't stop the urge to self-harm or to try and kill myself. That actually made it worse. And at some point, it finally got to the point where it's like, okay, um, I would honestly rather die than keep living like this, as in pretending not to be trans. And so I started coming out to people again. And the thing is that this time around, I ended up with more acceptance, at least, from more people. And you know what happened? I stopped wanting to die because people weren't constantly shitty. I don't have to constantly fear for my life anymore. Although I have basically been conditioned by 20 years of shit living to do exactly that. I don't, strictly speaking, have to. This is just a learned reflex, one that I am working to overcome, one that I hope to someday actually overcome. And that word, hope, is really big. It's big because it's something that I didn't have before, something that was kind of hard for me to even wrap my head around, the idea that things actually could get better. And they have to some extent. I'm not saying, oh, hey, look at how awesome my life is now, because that would be bullshit. But yeah, things have gotten better for me. And this doesn't seem like a particularly hard equation to work on either. Treat people like shit. Isolate them. Leave them feeling like they are some horrible abomination before the Lord or whatever science bullshit you wish to whip out from the 18th century. And 
they're going to have issues with things like depression. Don't do that, and maybe you'll end up with people who aren't suicidal. But the people who talk about this sort of thing generally aren't concerned with the well-being of trans individuals. They're concerned trolling because they want an excuse to say, well, you know, we should discourage them. If you're really concerned with lowering that number, I would suggest that you take steps like accepting the people in your life and normalizing gender identity. But I don't think these people actually care one bit, and I think the fact that they keep going the opposite route, the route that's dangerous, the route that's harmful, is all you need to demonstrate that. Because time and time again, you can show them study after study, you can show them medical opinion after medical opinion, and they're still going to be stuck in their ways. Now, you'll have to forgive me if the audio is kind of um, funkier than usual on this one, um, because it's hard for me to talk about this, and even harder for me to listen to it. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to normalize the volume, put it up basically unfiltered otherwise, and then just leave it alone, because... Well, because I have serious avoidance issues and I don't need the stress. Thanks for listening. Amaranth out.